<laughs> Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. It's great to have such a terrific turnout today. For our town hall meeting, uh, we're uh, just looking around the room. We're we're five generations, five generations represent in this room. Uh, one mission, one vision, one school. Uh, so we're excited about where we're headed. Uh, it was a great day yesterday. You may have noticed uh, <clears throat> the chancellor was out here with Mayor Rollins. Uh, we had a podcast, and uh, very cool. He met, uh, we almost couldn't get the podcast started because he was hanging out with our student leaders. Really good conversation. Then we, uh, Channel 11 was here talking to Unique Stewart, our student body president, and then interviewed me. It was a great report uh, yesterday. Uh, you can see it online if you, if you missed it. Uh, <clears throat> Chris Gardner was here, best-selling author, Packed House. Really good response on that. I appreciate uh, whoever brought him in. Thank you. That was good. Uh, a month ago, uh, Azim Rashid from Rock Nation was here to another full house. Uh, so I know we've invited some political figures to come in. Some government has done that. Uh, so that's you know just wonderful. Uh, Today, we have on campus uh, Sunset Collegiate Academy's, uh, uh, I think their first year class, just uh, getting a feel for UNT Dallas. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then in the afternoon from one to five, almost every leader in Dallas Independent School District will be here uh, for a planning session. And, uh, and then we will join them, uh, uh, in about uh, a month. So lots going on on our campus. That's a good, that's a good thing. Uh, we're definitely part of the community conversation, which is a point that the mayor made. All right, uh, grow with us. Uh, it's kind of my mantra uh, when people come and act like we're University of Texas and say, hey, can you give us $20,000 for the sponsorship? Our response is generally, how about you giving us $20,000? <laughs> Grow with us. Uh, happy to report record enrollment again, six straight semesters. Uh, thanks to everybody, enrollment management. I mean, this is a team effort across campus. We will be having a celebration uh, on the 11th, and there'll be an announcement on that. But we want to uh, we want to thank all of our people, enrollment management, student access and success, and everyone else who had anything to do uh, with this, uh, you know, excellent. Uh, we're also planning for the future. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're putting together, you know, pretty, pretty much identified the five or six things that we want to do in the next five years. Uh, I'd like to get, uh, I'd like to get community involvement. And so I'm going to have another town hall meeting in December. I haven't really fixed the date yet. I want to. I want to work with the Faculty Alliance and 
staff council and soon government to find a good date. Uh, it'll be kind of part recognition and part, you know, update, following up on this, talking about how we're doing this semester. Uh, but uh, anyway, I need all your involvement. Uh, we're, we've gotten really good here by, by getting everybody in the community involved in our university. Our strategic plan, I'll talk more about that in a second, has lots of people. I think one of the things that uh, really differentiates us is our partnership model. Four-year universities are not known uh, as great partners traditionally. If you read any poll, the American people feel that higher education, their first priority is themselves, that they're self-interested. Uh, and the second priority is students and community. But we're not like that. And we haven't been like that. I mean, we care. We want to we wanna keep the lights on. We want to make uh, money. Uh, but we have a very strong partnership model that's drawn attention. Uh, Melinda Gase was in town three months ago. She wanted to talk to me. She wanted to talk to Michael Hinojoso. She wanted to talk to uh, Joe May, Eric Mann, uh, head of the Dallas County Promise. And she wanted to understand, better understand the partnership model. Uh, just recently, we filled out a follow-up questionnaire from them. So keep your fingers crossed. Uh, our partners tend to be in about any school district around here. Uh, Nakia Douglas, our pre-collegiate pre czar, is here. Uh, he's doing amazing things in community schools. But we have formal partnerships, not only in the many schools that Upper Val 1 and 2 are involved in, uh, but the university with the Dallas Independent School District, uh, both formal and informal, uh, Dallas County Community College District, the Commit Partnership, uh, which is all about improving educational attainment in Dallas County. We're very involved in them. We're probably, uh, if I, I would venture to guess, we're their best university partner. It's all about, I think our, <clears throat> our reason to, to be is to address the educational disparities in North Texas. We all know, you know, you see it every day. Uh, educational attainment in North Texas is very closely tied to how much money your parents make. And we all know that that's, that's not just, that's not the America we want, that's not the North Texas we want. That's why UNT Dallas exists, but we can't do it alone, hence the partnership model. We've got to do it through them. Uh, one of the things that's st st stood us in really great, uh, great place is our vision, which is to be a pathway to social economic uh, mobility for our students. A lot of our students come from very modest background. The state, uh, latest state uh, wage, out of college wage, shows us at about 45,000, a little over. Uh, that's two or 3,000 above the state average for higher education graduates. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to continue to measure ourselves against that. Um, we, uh, we're deeply involved in early college high schools. We have two that we're directly involved in. We're the major of all the 24 early college high schools in the Dallas Independent School District. Uh, we have, uh, we're the only four-year partner, and we're the only four-year uh, that is the major partner at Sunset High School and Lincoln. And uh, a little bit more about that in a second. We also believe in close ties with uh, industry partners. So at Sunset, we have Baylor Scott & White. Children's Medical Center is amazing. They're on, they're on the ground all the time over there. Uh, DISD, Human Resources are on the ground because part of that Sunset is teacher training. It's teacher training in public health. Public health is why the hospitals are there. But teacher training, uh, the goal is to create a pipeline. We know we have a teacher shortage, and we want to be part of the solution by producing more high-quality uh, teacher. And then we were, all four-year universities were invited to participate in the creation of Dallas County Promise. Dallas County Promise um, provides free community college education. The first cohort just started a few weeks ago. It 
uh, it was offered to 9,300 seniors at 31 high poverty high schools, all tier one recruiting high schools for us. And um, <clears throat> so those kids had to sign a pledge card. They had to get their financial aid filled out early, which is always a good sign. That's a leading indicator whether you're going to go to college or not. And then uh, they had to waive their FERPA uh, rights because uh, we all exchange data. Uh, and we're one of the few four years that does that. But, but how can you measure outcomes if you don't, if you don't have good data? Sam Shi and Brody can tell you that. So uh, anyway, we're off and running with them. We're already working on their second cohort. Uh, so we're proud of these partnerships. Uh, we also hired a mission. I, I'm very impressed with the uh, academic arrivals this year, and I like uh, Betty Stewart, our provost, uh, just to uh, recognize our, our, our new academic employees. Thank you. Good morning. Um, would all the new faculty who may or may not be in this room please stand and wave? Uh, we want the staff to know who you are. <clears throat> We're so pleased to add 14 new faculty this year to the uh, to to our uh, cohort. Uh, I'd also like to introduce two new administrators who started in in this year. Uh, the dean of the College of Law, Dean Felicia Epps. Please stand. <clears throat> And Dr. Dawn Rimmers, uh, she's my new assistant provost uh, who's barely been here a month. W welcome, Dawn. Thank you, Betty. And let me add to that welcome. Uh, I'd like Stephanie Holly also to uh, uh, just to recognize her new employees. Uh, I'll talk a little more about this, but we've invested in the last year heavily in what I call under the hood areas like financial aid, recruitment, uh, and on and on, finance and accounting. Thank you, President Mong. Welcome to this morning. What a neat time to be together. Another uh, semester of record enrollment. Woo-hoo. Okay, student affairs staff, we have Denise Valdez. Is Denise in the house? Okay, she's in the very back. Wave at Denise. She's Jamaica's right hand. Marika Gray. She's in the very back, too, waving. Whitney Crawford in the back, too. They must have come in together. Jackie Polk. There's Jackie, not quite in the back, but almost. Erica Little, out today. Okay, Adeline Berger in the back, not all the way. Okay, undergraduate admissions. And we had somebody from undergraduate admissions sneak over into the advising line. So uh, they're not trying to be an academic advisor. They're just in the wrong spot. Um, so undergraduate admissions, Luis Franco, who is the director, many of you all know, but want to recognize him. Michelle Hurdle has a new position with us. She is a transfer coordinator. She's the queen of transfer, if you know her. <laughs> TJ Vons, who we know and love well, is TJ in the house. Brand new this week, Alexis Walker. Alexis, welcome. And Tyler Birch. Where's it? There's Tyler. Wave your hand high so people see you, Tyler. You're going to be famous. Okay, financial aid and scholarships. Carla Dixon, our new associate director, who's been here for a minute. She's off today. Okay, pat Carl on the back when you see her. Philip Kwong. Is Philip in? He's probably working for trying to complete financial aid files. Okay, Marla Thornton, are you in the house? She's working too. Okay, now for academic advising. We have Alonzo Brooks. Alonzo, there you are, back in the back. Antoine Crutcher. Yay. Shannon Garrett. Yay, Shannon, welcome. Brianna, who I think goes by Bonnie Wakefield. 
She's out. Okay. All right. And then we've already said Alexis, she's in admissions. And then in my office, and a new right hand to help me is Megan Torres. There's Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I want to thank our students too. Uh, they approached us. They wanted us to uh, they were willing to pay for more advisors, and now our student-to-advisor ratio is 1 to 250. Uh, compare that to UNT, which is 1 to 400, and they've brought their I mean, they're doing, for a school their size, 1 to 4 is good. 1 to 250 is better. better. Uh, so uh, thank you to the students, and it's great to have our advisors. I'd also like to recognize uh, uh, Jim Main, our new executive vice president. Uh, <clears throat> what I... Finance and accounting. Uh, Jim uh, ha has been in a similar system. University of Nebraska, which has a big system, big university like UNT, uh, med school in Omaha, similar to what we've got in Fort Worth, and a smaller school, Kearney, uh, out in uh, uh, out in the middle of Nebraska. So, and he's also worked at a startup uh, university in the Cal State system. So, uh, Jim, you're going to introduce some of your folks. Thank you, President Mung. Good morning, everyone. Um, in the finance and administration area, you can see there's a good number of people. If your name is up there and you recognize it, would you please stand up for me? <laughs> Besides me, come on, come on, come on. Don't be bashful, don't be bashful. Come on, let's go. Very well. Well, I want to thank those folks. Uh, we have an entirely new team in the budget and finance area, um, and we have a new associate vice president that has come on board, um, and I'd like to introduce Jackie Elder. She's here in the front, and she's going to be working with many, if not all, of our campus leaders about living within your means. Um, we've created budgets. We've shared budget information. Um, I'm not called the money guy for nothing, uh, but uh, Jackie and her team will be working with all our campus leaders to help um, the university move forward in a financially stable uh, manner. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Welcome, Jackie. Um, so I've been impressed with uh, the leadership of uh, Faculty Alliance, uh, staff council and our student government and I wanted uh, uh, and I'm very serious about that and uh, I feel like they're uh, great allies for all of us uh, they bring stuff to our attention that we need to hear about and I just like to ask uh, invite Marco Shapik Dr. Shapik just to say a few words about uh, the direction of the faculty alliance this uh, this academic year thank you Dr. Shapik. thank you president Mung. Um, I'm the president serving currently as president of Faculty Alliance. If you don't know me, I'm in the School of Teacher Education or the School of Education, and I usually teach um, the linguistics courses. Um, Faculty Alliance does a lot of important work um, that probably flies under the radar a little bit. They don't make TV dramas about our committee, faculty committee work. <laughs> So I wanted to start by recognizing uh, some of the work that has been done in our standing committees and give you a sense of what we do uh, in these committees. So uh, Dr. Richard Chandler, he's in the Department of Mathematics. He's chairing the Faculty Work-Life Committee and they worked on a policy last year that got approved on our office hours. Like I told you, they don't make uh, TV shows about this. Our office hour policy. Uh, <clears throat> and they're currently working on something that's um, very needed here is the career trajectories of lecturers. So folks are either on a tenure track or they're tenured uh, or their lectures and lectures don't have, um, you know, logical progressions uh, to advance in their careers. So they're working on that this year. Um, Dr. Patricia Wine uh, from the School of Business, she's the chair of Academic Affairs, and they've been taking on some very um, hefty, beefy topics like um, intellectual property policy, uh, academic withdrawal policy, 
uh, academic integrity policy for students um, who plagiarize or cheat. Uh, those have been huge accomplishments coming out of this committee, so I just want to recognize the work from those committees. Um, Dr. William Gardner, he, I believe he's here. No? He is chairing um, the Committee on Faculty Senate. We're trying to transition from our current format into a, a faculty senate. We want to formalize uh, what we do. Uh, we want to become more efficient, more effective. So he's uh, heading that uh, initiative. This last year, we recognized three of our faculty, and we awarded them uh, for service. So Dr. Julie Sadiq, you can wave a little bit. She won our service, service award. Um, Dr. Anthony Cheney won our research award. And Dr. Yes. Fantastic work that he has done with research. And Dr. Eric Coleman won our teaching award. And um, these are the people that I've mentioned, but overall I'm representing faculty, but I'm very proud uh, of my colleagues, of all of the work they're doing inside the classroom, in the community, uh, all around the stuff that they're doing, they're going above and beyond. So thank you, faculty, and let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Marco. The uh, year didn't, wasn't but a couple days old before I started to see all these emails coming out of uh, staff council with, an, with initiatives, wellness, um, <clears throat> bowling tournaments, uh, many other things. So uh, I was just wanted to invite uh, Darren or Shanice down just to, uh, there's Darren, uh, both of you if you'd like, uh, <laughs> just to uh, talk about some of the things you're up to. And no, they're a good team. Uh, thank you, Darren. Thank you. So I first want to thank everyone on the staff council executive team, Shanice Miller, Haley Flanagan, Ashley Spearman and Arthur Lumsey, uh, and we're still looking for a treasurer. Um, <laughs> so some of the things we've done so far, we have brought out, uh, who was that? Uh, the vice chancellor came out here and he spoke a little bit about retirement options. And uh, we have Blue Cross Blue Shield coming this next Friday, and they'll be giving some updates about your insurance. Uh, we're partnering with um, a local elementary school, thanks to Kevin Rocha, we're going to partner with an elementary school and bring them out here on Halloween, and we're going to have a story day. Um, we are having a staff day as well. We're partnering with um, Advancement, and in, the, uh, in, in December, we're going to partner with them as well to talk, uh, to do some, what is, what is that? Blazer Bowl. Yes, Blazer Bowl, thank you. I, I knew it was something. There's a lot going on. Uh, so we are definitely hitting the ground running and doing a lot of things for the staff and for the community. So um, one of the things that Darren and I mentioned whenever we became president and vice president was that we wanted to make sure that staff felt included and needed. And so anytime um, you guys want to do an event, we went bowling. Our team won the staff council executive team. Right. Thanks. We beat um, uh, HR. <laughs> so. Just an FYI, just thought I'd, you know, give our bragging rights right there. Um, but, but we're going to do more things like that um, to keep us um, included, to make sure that everybody feels um, like they're a part of the team. Um, and then also with the, um, with the elementary school, service was a big part of what we wanted to do um, as a staff inside here and then outside in the community with our mission and our vision being what it is. Um, so we're going to be sending out emails. So President Mung, you're going to get more emails because we're going to need some volunteers for um, our community involvement day with the little ones who are going to be on campus. So anything you guys need, staff day is going to be fun next week. Uh, we're going to send out more emails. So just let Darren and I know. Thank you. Thank you, Shadis and Darren. Uh, obviously, the third leg of all this is, uh, is uh, student leadership. And uh, I see our student body, can you come down? Uh, Unique, Unique Stewart, our student body president.
I was in uh, uh, Livingston, Texas on the 21st and 22nd, and I uh, had a chance to talk to uh, almost 100 people there uh, from student leadership. It was really good back and forth. I have a long list, which I read to them, of things that student, students have brought to our attention that we have changed on this campus. So keep it up. And uh, uh, Unique, I know you had a good conversation with the mayor yesterday. You were on television, and you were in the Star-Telegram. So way to go. <laughs> Well, I just want to say that um, staff, we greatly do appreciate you guys. You guys do so much for us all the time. Um, I really appreciate every single department. You guys have your own special way of giving back to students and doing so much. And your work never goes unnoticed. So I know you're like, I wonder if they see what we're doing. We see. We're just like trying to like go to class, go to work, appreciate them, like get everything done. Um, but I do look forward to, I do have some ideas of mine in collaborating with um, staff council, so I'll go with Shanice and Darren so we can talk more about that. And um, that way we can, you know, develop our relationship with you guys even more with students. That way, you know, it's unbreakable and everything. <laughs> but thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Nate. One of the, <clears throat> really one of the pillars that we wanted to do today was also uh, bring you up to date. We had our, our on strategic planning. We had our fourth uh, retreat, uh, July 9th and 10th. We extended it a half day. Uh, we had students, staff, faculty, community members, folks from the Health Science Center in Fort Worth, and folks from the UNT system there. So it was a good, broad discussion. Uh, I would say that uh, we, because we're really starting our fourth year. Uh, of this really interactive strategic plan, we wanted to kind of relook at some of the basics. Uh, everybody was really strong on our mission. No one wanted to change a word of it. Uh, you know, empower, transform, strengthen. Uh, that's had that's withstood the test of time and 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 is very strong. No one would change that. We had just a little uh, uh, tweaking of the uh, vision. Uh, through education, community connectedness, UNT Dallas aspires to be the pathway to social socioeconomic mobility in its primary market. So, slight change, but it's still in the spirit. That idea of pathway, pathway for our students, pathway for, uh, for this university to assist our community in growing and developing, uh, those, those have been really strong, strong uh, metaphors, I think. Uh, our, our goals, uh, we had one change. Everyone wanted to keep this idea of rooted in the community where we recruit students from urban Dallas, the inner ring suburbs, the community colleges. That's still our bread and butter. Uh, but also you turn community connectedness around and it's, we serve this community. And through our various institutes, uh, the Caruth Police Institute, uh, many of you know that, uh, happy to say, that uh, uh, Jennifer Davis Lamb is our interim director of CPI. Is she here today? Uh, but anyway, we're really pleased to have uh, Jennifer. We'll have a, a press release going out on that. Uh, Dr. Sh Melinda Schlager uh, has left, joined Dan Edelman out in uh, uh, Montana State Billings, Montana State University Billings as the provost. Um, thank her for her service here. I think she really stabilized CPI. Um, and, uh, but Jennifer will take over. We'll do a, a national search uh, for that position. Um, growth, it's integral to what we do. We, we need to grow to be more relevant. We've been growing, growing faster than anybody else in North Texas, one of the fastest growing in the state of Texas. And that means if you're one of the fastest growing in the state of Texas, you're one of the fastest growing in the country. Just ask your colleagues in the Midwest, in the, in the Middle Atlantic or the Northeast, how they're doing right now, not too good. And uh, our third goal had been service. And so the, the group felt very strongly, the 60 or so who participated, that we needed to uh, change the third goal to commitment to relentless focus on student success. So uh, this stuff is pretty well developed, but any of you who have any other thoughts on 
what I just talked about, we certainly would invite your feedback. Uh, <clears throat> now, values, I really would value your feedback <laughs> because my feeling was our, our mission and vision and goals were very strong, have been very strong, and they've helped guide us uh, very, very well uh, the last three and a half years. When we looked at our values, there was nothing wrong with them, but it was more like a laundry list. And so everybody wanted to take a stab at it. So uh, Michael Williams headed a committee to look at the values uh, again, and he wants to uh, bring you up to date on, on the, the values. We wanted to shorten them. We wanted them to be more uh, specific. And we also are inviting uh, your feedback on those too. There should be a handout. If you have, okay, thank you. <laughs> Good morning. As President Monk mentioned, during the strategic planning uh, retreat in July, we looked at the number of core values that we had, and there were about eight of them. And it was the feeling of the group that we needed to reduce that number. And during that retreat, that number was reduced down to about six. After that, I think President Mung looked at it again and said, you know, it's still going to be very difficult for many of us to remember six core values. Those core values are supposed to tell us what's the essence, what's our soul, you know, who are we? And so we got a small committee together, about 12 people, that included students, staff, faculty, and administrative leadership, and looked at it anew. What is in front of you are the five values that we believe define us, that tell you, that tell all of us and others who we are, and talk, sort of about the soul of it. And I, I'm not going to go through the language there, but you see those five there. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. In the, between now and the next two weeks, take a look at it. If you think there ought to be changes, particularly to the descriptive language, please email and let me know. As a matter of fact, somebody's already given me a suggestion. In the very, in the very, very first one, where it says, we value our differences, experiences, and backgrounds. People are individuals and a great asset to the group. The re recommendation was, well, what's the group? It said to the UNTD community. And so we'll make that change. If there are other suggestions like that, please, please let me know. Afterwards, after we get it in its final form, uh, the committee has been charged with um, getting this on our website and getting it on all of our collateral material to the extent that that's practicable and to go about the business of trying to find some interesting ways to sort of help all, all of us come to understand it. So we actually know you can rattle them off what our core values are. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, again, we have wide participation in our strategic plan and their teams. Uh, if you're not involved and you see something, I'm just going to show you uh, our major teams uh, that are very, very active. And if any of these appeal to you, uh, please, uh, uh, please join uh, because we want more input, not less input. So. Holistic Enrollment has been a very strong team. It's been changed. Uh, Dr. Edelman used to run it. Uh, Dr. Bartula has taken it over, changed the configuration, made, uh, made it really more of a, a small uh, a team with a lot of, uh, what I, a lot of subcommittees, uh, such, such as um, assisting enrollment management, finding out what enrollment management needs to succeed, and so there's a subcommittee that's working closely with our enrollment management team. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a very active team, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second, for athletics and the future of athletics here. Uh, we have one, Future of International, a great team. But if you're interested in international, and, you know, because uh, our students are interested, that's what they told me uh, down in Livingston, you know, they'd love some study abroad opportunities. And uh, I think it would be great to have some more uh, international students here. Uh, <clears throat> so that's a subcommittee. Then we have another subcommittee that uh, was very active uh, uh, at, uh, about our space at 1901 Main Street. Uh, we call it uh, the 
aspirationally, UNT Dallas downtown. And uh, so the question is, uh, the question that I posed to the committee was with the law school, most of the law school at least, moving over uh, to the municipal building, uh, certainly by next fall, uh, be open before then, um, that's gonna open up a lot of space in there. So how do, how do we want to use it? Do we want to use it? Uh, you know, we don't, want to, we don't want to grow UNT downtown at the expense of the Southern campus. Obviously, when you grow, you want to, if you're going to do something like that, you want to grow both of them, create a new market. And so that's the subcommittee there. So if you're interested in trying to figure out how we can use that space or not use that space, uh, see Dr. Bartula, because that, that committee is going to get really revved up. Uh, obviously, our budget committee is the University Budget Advisory Committee. Not every university uh, has one like this. It involves representation from all over uh, the campus and the law school. And, uh, uh, and this year we had 51 presentations representing every aspect of the school. So the people who are on UBAC, they work hard. But it's also a good way, just thinking ahead, if you want to look at how a university operates, this one in particular, there are no secrets. This is all, <laughs> it's right there in front of you, all the X's and O's on how this university functions. Obviously, Wayne McGinnis is running our space, uh, University Space Advisory Committee. This is important because as we're moving people over to uh, the new building, which we'll talk about in a second, it frees a lot of space in Building One and Founders Hall. And so we're pretty far down the line on how we're gonna use that space. But if you're interested, if, you, if, if that interests you, uh, get involved uh, uh, because, uh, you know, Wayne hasn't uh, put the final touches on that yet to present to, to the cabinet, but he's done a great job and so is the committee. The culture committee is one of the most important here. We want to be a best place to work. Uh, <clears throat> this is hard work working here. We all know that. Everybody carries several buckets and uh, very mission oriented. Everybody loves the mission. But the work is hard. And so how do you have this hard, you know, hard working environment and turn it into, you know, best place to work? So uh, Gary Finney is head of that uh, committee. I just was going to ask Gary just, just uh, briefly bring people up to date on that. This important committee, it's got a large uh, membership already. But if you want to get involved in this, uh, it, there's going to be a lot of action coming out of it. Thank you, President Mong. Uh, the Culture Committee is about really one thing. It's about making us the best place. I know we talk about best place to work, but my former friend Shanice said it. It really needs to be, <laughs> it needs to be a best place. And honestly, we have a number of people in this room who are involved one way or another in our culture committee. Matter of fact, if you're part of one of the committees, if you're participating in one of the programs, could you raise your hand or stand just real quickly so people can see? Look, President Monk, we got all of these people already involved. Thank you so much. Um, there's a lot of things that we're doing. Uh, President Monk has already mentioned a recognition, and I'm partnering with him because we're going to have a major town hall in December where we're going to recognize you for some of the great things you're doing. Uh, we're looking at our job description. We're looking at a lot of different things, kind of some pilot programs. But one he wanted me to mention this morning is that career development. Um, we launched a career development program last month. We have 10 people who are already participating, and it seems to be going very, very well. And what they're going to cover, uh, and we, we um, kind of borrowed a program from the University of British Columbia, but we're looking at where are you now, where do you want to go, what steps do you need to take to get there, and what resources might I use. And so we have 10 people, actually 11, who are participating in the program. Seems to be going well. We will have a brawler launch in the spring, but right now we're kind of doing a, a little something to see how it's gonna go. But we need your help. With all of the hands that came up, we still need more people because we've got some other things we wanna do. And if you wanna be a part of this, please, please come see me or someone who raised their hands. We'll be more than happy to invite you in. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Gary. Uh, under the hood <clears throat> was our major initiative, strategic initiative last year, uh, under the direction of our new registrar, uh, not so new anymore, John Capocci, he's doing a great job, both as registrar and 
uh, and as leader of this committee. And so we're really focusing uh, right now on a, a couple of things. One, one of them is to get degree audit right. We've invested a lot of money in, um, in the technology and in a, and getting a consultant in here to tell us what we need to do to get from here to there. And I, I, want, I just want to publicly thank John and his committee for all the hard work that, that they've done. Um, I also, uh, we are also very dedicated to getting to a place where we can have multi-semester registration on our campus. A lot of uh, best practices in urban universities around the country are beginning to uh, uh, introduce that choice for undergraduates because it gives them a multi-semester pathway and often uh, improves retention. That's been the uh, findings at places like Cleveland State. That, that have introduced it. So we're very eager to get that started. It has a collateral uh, benefit also of helping the CFO and his team plan financially. It helps a provost plan uh, for uh, how many teachers we're going to need uh, one, two semesters out. So this is a big deal. John will be reporting uh, just updates uh, monthly to our cabinet. So thank you, John, for what, what you're doing. The QEP is a huge effort underway. I wanted to ask Dr. Stewart again just to uh, brief you on where we are with the QEP. Hello, everyone. Um, as you know, our QEP um, is the um, plan from our SACS visit, um, and ours is... Yay! <laughs> okay, so career readiness education. Uh, when the team was here in April, they reviewed our proposal and uh, when they left uh, at the end of the visit, they had no recommendations for career readiness. Yeah. So it kicked off this fall. Um, we have in our UGST freshman seminar, first year seminar course, uh, some of the cred activities. Uh, Miss Aronia King, I'm, I'm not sure she's in the room. Uh, she's going to serve as our QEP coordinator, and Dr. Elizabeth Muniz will be our QEP director. So we're off and running, and we're excited. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Uh, also, there were a ton of people served on Dr. Muniz's team, and thanks to all of you uh, as well. Uh, rapid response with that is, uh, I think it's most people's favorite uh, meeting each month where we go over all of our community, uh, uh, that's a joke, bad joke. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but we go over all of our community partnerships just to make sure who's on first. Are we, are, is the next step belong to us or does it belong to our partner? And it's really kept us honest and has kept our partners honest. And frankly, in some cases, we've, you know, erased some partnerships because uh, we were, you know, it was all us and none them. So any partnership that works has to be mutual. And then fundraising, we're making a lot of progress. Uh, I don't know, did you want to say anything about fundraising or you just? Uh... I'll time off anyone All right, good. So anyway, we're making progress and we're doing very well on, on the grant side. We'll talk about that in a second. So fiscal responsibility, that's going to be a big issue this, this year. We're still waiting on the final uh, our fiscal year budget. Uh, <clears throat> And, uh, but we've invested, you know, we, we went into reserves about $3 million this year at the, uh, under, with the approval of the Board of Regents. Uh, the year before, we invested about $2 million in faculty uh, and came out in the black. Last year, uh, fiscal year, this was the under the hood to go into some areas where we really needed to beef up the staffs. And uh, we did that. And so we're waiting to see how we can, but if we're in the red, it's not, I don't think it's going to be by much, uh, but everybody's done a really good job managing their expenses uh, through, the, through the summer. Uh, we, looking ahead this year, until we see how we get off, how the year gets off, uh, we do have an increased uh, tuition that's in play. Uh, we have fees that we didn't have before. Remember, we didn't, we didn't increase uh, <clears throat> tuition or fees for three years. Only State University in Texas not to do that. And, uh, but... We, you know, fiscally responsible, we had to do it this year, and then the students voted to increase their fees. So, uh, 
so anyway, we just want to make sure that we're very, uh, very cautious until we see how the year is going to come out. So all hiring requests are going to come through me, Jim, and Betty, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we'll, we'll be hiring uh, strategically. Uh, and then you back again, those of you who are on the committee for next year, thank you, because I know it's really hard work. Uh, and these is, I think I mentioned most of this, just a little more detail about, you know, obviously we're minority serving, a Hispanic serving institution. Um, you can see the 51% growth. You can see the areas that have, that have grown. Um, our law school is also really uh, thriving. We had a thousand applicants this year. Uh, this is a, again, a customer service. Uh, initiative by Enrollment Management Student Access and Success, uh, where they're, uh, every interface, every touch point through enrollment management, they, there is a survey uh, and folks are getting uh, feedback. Uh, Stephanie, you're hearing from, uh, let me just, you're getting, people are using it, right? <clears throat> People are using it. So you can click on the You Matter survey. It's on the admissions front page right now. It will be on the front page of the website soon. Um, but students are using it. Staff, faculty can use it. If you don't know who to get to, click on it, fill it out, put a little note in there. It comes directly to me. And if I don't have the answer, I'll get it to somebody who does. But you'll hear back immediately. And so the students are already using it. So it's a way for us to solve problems quickly. We know that if we can know about a problem, we can save the student and the problem. When we don't know, that's the problem. So this helps us. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to point out, uh, tied to our enrollment growth, I just wanted to show you some of the departments that are uh, growing rapidly, political science, hospital management, logistics and supply side, interdisciplinary studies and education, criminal justice masters, languages and communication, uh, biology, uh, <clears throat> really growing public health, information tech, math, public leadership. These are some of the fast growing areas here. So congratulations, congratulations to all the leaders in, in those areas. Uh, Betty, uh, we're getting close to the end. On this. We're down to number seven. <laughs> So I can't thank this campus community enough for all the work you've done to help us move toward our reaffirmation of accreditation. Uh, this started over a year ago, and um, we're down to number seven. So cross your fingers and hope everything goes well. All right. Thank you, Betty. All right. It says a lot about a university. Who invests in you. So we're very proud that uh, <clears throat> we have these supporters, Charles Butt, Raise Your Hand, Texas. Uh, Ch Charles, a billionaire from uh, San Antonio, big education reformer. Meadows Foundation, TI Foundation, they're helping us build a principal type pipeline in the D Dallas Independent School District. Uh, Wipro Foundation, uh, is Ratna here, Ratna's doing a great job training uh, training uh, math and science teachers in participating schools. Uh, Verizon Foundation, Toyota, uh, is, uh, is Dr. Shumway and Kelly Varga here. Uh, anyway, it is an 18-month capstone project uh, that is, a, again, partnership model. Toyota Foundation is supporting a number of our students in business uh, and in liberal arts uh, to run a green mobility program to provide fresh fruits and vegetables uh, to area uh, in, uh, folks in need. We know there's a food desert around here. And so DART is a partner. They've donated a, uh, a low emission bus. And then Cedar Valley College, another partner of I, ours, will be doing the retrofitting of the bus. And then our uh, business students will be providing the business plan. Uh, and then Kelly Varga will you know, be uh, kind of on point to get this thing up and running. So a great partnership all around. 
Uh, we also recently learned that uh, criminal justice, Dr. Coleman got a uh, affordable baccalaureate, baccalaureate uh, uh, foundation grant from the coordinating board, uh, which we're really proud of uh, in, in the criminal justice area uh, to provide low cost education in a high need area. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I guess in addition to that, I wanted to mention the Texas Parks and Wildlife um, project that we partner with uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife in the city of Dallas um, to extend the Runyon Creek Trail through our campus. So uh, that is going to be really exciting. Um, that's a combination of city funds, Texas Parks and Wildlife investment through a grant and a private philanthropy that President Mong and I have uh, secured to move forward. Also, um, I wanted to mention uh, going back to uh, the sponsored projects area and Alicia Brosse, who runs that, that we have um, a new staff person. Colette, are you in here? Okay, good. And so we really have a team now. We're independent, um, an independent sponsored projects office, which means that we don't have to um, have approval from the uh, UNT um, sponsored projects office in Denton. And uh, that's really, really exciting. So, uh, uh, you know, a big step for UNT Dallas. <laughs> we have the first um, ever um, seven figure gift from an individual that we'll be announcing later uh, this year. And it's um, for a really special project to our campus um, that will. Uh, really move us towards legacy and um, establishing traditions on our campus, so stay tuned. Um, and then also, I, President Mong mentioned um, the fundraising committee, and so obviously all uh, folks welcome to join us as we uh, really plow through. I have Derek Morgan, who moved from the College of Law uh, down to our campus to help with fundraising. Um, so if you're in a department, um, uh, school, college, he's still helping with the College of Law, but we need um, all hands on deck as we begin to talk, go out and talk to the philanthropic community about investing in UNT Dallas. So um, really serious stuff, but fun stuff um, happening and moving along. And we've really been began to get interest uh, from the philanthropic community to um, give not just uh, scholarships to our school, but but programmatic um, gifts. So that's that's really going a long way. And I think the last thing um, I wanted to mention is just a shout out to the marketing team because uh, Paul Corliss and his team, um, you're beginning to see. Right now, we're we're doing a live stream, and I think we have how many participants? been up in the 30s so folks are um, seeing us in this room right now uh, live um, we're doing Facebook live right now and then a lot of the other social um, imprints and impressions that we're making um, on the move all of the the other things you see like uh, billboards and, and the like I just want to uh, publicly thank them for all the work they do thanks Monica Uh, I want to make sure we get to questions, but I did want to just point out a couple of things here. Uh, we're doing a lot on the entrepreneurial side. Uh, it's a uh, multi-department effort. Michael Williams heads our entrepreneurial effort. We do have a DEC series of office. We were the first, you know, first university, first institution in Southern Dallas to have a Dallas Entrepreneur Center office on our campus. Uh, the Redbird Mall will start one soon they have a kickoff on november 1st we'll partner with them paul quinn will come online fairly soon and a group in fair park is going to come on so there's going to be a real opportunity for synergy i want to thank angie castillo for uh angie put your hand play for, for creating the a-team this is a group that involves every admin in uh unt dallas and it's a great way to get information out and get feedback uh, to, to all of us. So thanks for the great idea. Navigating Leadership, thank you, Gary. We're now in our fourth uh, cohort year, 
uh, and we have 17 in the class. Uh, our partnerships have been recognized. We were invited uh, to the Coalition of Urban and Metro Universities in Chicago in a couple weeks to present on uh, the partnership among UNT Dallas, the Community College, DISD, the Commit Partnership, uh, for the Dallas County Promise. Uh, and then uh, thank you to CPI for uh, withstanding the test of time. We had a great party the other night, uh, marking their 10th anniversary. Uh, intercollegiate athletics, uh, October, later this month, uh, we'll have informational campaigns uh, to you know, explore the idea of uh, starting intercollegiate athletics here uh, in 19, uh, 2019 or 2020. Uh, obviously, you can read for yourself the many benefits, uh, but as I told students at the retreat in Livingston, uh, uh, it's up to them. Uh, now, the young people in the room, uh, almost all of them uh, support intercollegiate athletics, so any of you who are interested in attending the town halls, contributing your ideas, uh, little marketing will put out uh, plenty of uh, notice on those meetings, and then we'll have a vote sometime in, in November. Uh, <clears throat> Dean Epps is here. I just wanted uh, to recognize her and give her a, a chance just to bring you up to date uh, from the Dean's perspective on our really exciting College of Law. Wow. Thank you, Paul, for that wonderful picture, first of all. <laughs> uh, I was supposed to say, actually, thank you, uh, President Mong and Provost Stewart for the honor of uh, serving as Dean of the UNTD College of Law. It's truly an honor and it's very exciting. And as I came to this room this morning, I, didn't, I don't know much about the campus yet. I know it's not very big, but I haven't learned a lot about it. Um, and I, it was in room 101. And when I got here, I realized, yes, I know about this room. I know about this room because the last time I stood up to talk, really in front of my, the first time actually in front of my part-time entering students, it was in this room because there was this water main break downtown and that threw our whole fundamental schedule off. And it was wonderful how seamlessly everything came together through the support of uh, this campus to get our 1L students over here. You really, the program was fabulous and you wouldn't have known that it wasn't scheduled to be here originally which gave me some ideas. I learned from some of our faculty and staff that they've actually never been over here. How can that be? They've never been to the main campus. And certainly those part-time students had a uh, experience and they know about this campus now. Um, I have three things really to tie in with what's up there. Of course, our, uh, my major task from the provost and the president is to get the school through full accreditation. We are provisionally accredited now. That happened in May 2017. We have five years to attain that full accreditation. And the ABA uh, monitors you in the meantime. So they will be joining us in March of 2019 for a site, interim site visit. So we're busy working on that. And depending on what feedback we get, then we'll go for our full accreditation. Um, very important, of course, that we get that. But I'm asked sometimes, well, what's the difference with provisional accreditation? How does that affect the students? Actually, our students, as they graduate, they can sit for the bar in any state. Um, it's, you're treated just as an accredited school. It's just that we have to get that full accreditation. Once we do that, uh, the, all things going wonderfully, the ABA will only come visit us every 10 years. And so uh, we'll be free of that for a bit. We did have our all-time high number of applicants for admission this year. And just to kind of put that in perspective, we had the uh, 1,000 applicants for the fall 2018 class. Fall 2017, it was 500. Okay. So that is a marked improvement. I wish I could take credit, but you know, it was those admissions people working all year to get the, the applications in. Out of that number of applications, we ended up with 140 students entering, which is 20 more than we had planned for. So we were up a little bit. We have 90 in the full-time division and we have uh, 50 uh, in the part-time division. 
Um, the most exciting thing happening, of course, is our new building. Um, you know, we are right downtown in the systems building right now, but right across the street is the municipal building that is just, I got to take a tour of it last week. It is coming along fabulously, uh, marble floors, wonderful paneling and all those things. Um, and I like to say that I will be the only law school dean who has three jail cells <laughs> on the sixth floor. So, provost, if you have any faculty or students who, you know, not be, no, I would never really do that, of course. I tried to get one of my associate deans just to go in and see if, you know, the really, the locking mechanism still works. They wouldn't do that. I'm assured by the con those doing the construction that they do work, that's part of the historical preservation. We have to maintain those. That those are the cells where Lee Harvey Oswald and Jack Ruby were held. So they will be up there, they will be visible, there will be a glass door over them and the dean will have a master key, I was assured, <laughs> so we want to do that. But anyway, the building will be completed in March in time for us to show it off to our ABA visitors, which is really good. That's going to be putting a really good foot forward. And then because of the academic calendar, we won't be able to move in until the end of June. So we'll be making that major move. Some of the, fac the facilities we will still have in the, uh, the, I guess it's a Lee Jackson building, we'll still have those facilities, including our li law library. I see our law library director back there, Dean Hart, will still be there with a law library and some of the classrooms will still be there. But anyway, very exciting time, and thank you for that opportunity to update everyone. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> there will be a reception for Dean Epps uh, at 11 o'clock, excuse me, 6 o'clock on October 11th. Is that right? In the atrium of the law school. Anybody in this room is invited. Uh, and uh, Dr. Santos Hatchet has her. Hand up, let me, hold on just a second, so you, we don't want you to miss the live stream. Thank you so much for all you're doing. I have a burning question. Of those thousand applicants, um, what percentage come from UNT Dallas? Uh, do we have a robust pipeline? How are we doing here in preparing our undergrads to think about law school? I can't give you a percentage. I know that there are very few at this point, and we are really into pipeline building with uh, a, certainly our home school, UNT Dallas, and our admissions office will be working on those things. But certainly, I forgot to give a plug for the school. Are there students in here as well? You know, make sure you, all right, writing, Critical thinking, those things are, people think lawyers get up and talk, and we do that, but really, it's about those boring things that people don't put on TV and in movies. It's about writing and reading, okay? But we want to build that, um, and because we want, right now, actually, one thing I didn't say, we've got that 140 students now. That's really about our capacity because of the size, the space that we have available but we want to keep that going. Thank you. Uh, obviously, some of those fast-growing departments are things like political science, which are you know, traditional feeders into law school. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> I see good days ahead. You'll notice also, we sent our first two students to medical school this year. Um, we sent... <laughs> And we sent our first, first student ever to an Ivy League graduate school this year, so. Uh, just briefly on the legislature, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, this is the biggest thing we're facing right now is to make sure that we come out of legislature whole uh, and even up. I hope we're up. Uh, I've been down there twice testifying. I'll be down there many more times. Uh, and uh, so our goal is to increase support not only for our university, but for our law school. These are, you know, very important developing institutions. They are funded differently 
than uh, uh, older universities like UNT, uh, University of Texas, University of Houston. So it's important that <clears throat> uh, the legislator not lose sight of, of our developing universities. Uh, just quickly, uh, uh, Dean Epps told you about the municipal building, a beautiful Beaux-Arts uh, and architectural specimen. Uh, this is kind of what we're going to look like. Uh, uh, this building should be substantially completed by uh, April. Uh, there'll be a, out of the southern, this is the southern part, there'll be a terrace lawn that will lead to the amphitheater which will present, I know some students are already working on a play uh, to sort of launch the amphitheater. Uh, we didn't ask them to do that, they initiated that. And, uh, and then we've already raised more than half the funds for this tower. And so it'll be the tallest point in Southern Dallas, Other, and it'll be a beacon on top, so we'll, people will be able to see us from miles away. Uh, <clears throat> So we're very excited about that. And let me just play this and I'll take questions then. Thanks to everybody who participated in creating that. I do believe we have an urban advantage. Dallas needs a great urban university. We're poised to fulfill that role. Uh, just like the University of Chicago, uh, University of Illinois in Chicago, every, most major cities have a university. That's where we're headed. That's where we want to be. Uh, now, uh, Open it up now to questions, and you can watch me run around the room and hand over the mic. So, uh, who has some who has some questions? Chris. Hello, Ms. Monk, President Monk. Um, my first question is, what are we doing to provide tutoring services for our students other than the math lab and writing lab uh, for specific majors here on campus? Uh, we can address that first one. We have uh, the experts in the room and anybody wants to, uh, let me take a stab at it. I know we have trained, not only do we have professional tutors, uh, but we have increased, as I said earlier, our advising staff now is 1 to 250, which has got to be the lowest of any university in Texas. Uh, we're also training peer advisors because we have found that students uh, often want to talk to other students uh, about their issues. So I'll ask anybody in the tutoring staff or uh, if they want to, uh, uh, Paulina, let me...
service that is available for students 24 7. So if the writing center or the math lab or our lesson hall or our campus tutoring is not available, uh, students can access that free of cost to them at any point in time, any day, any hour. And that includes all of the sessions that we currently do not have tutors in right now. Um, so we, we, if you have any ideas, please let me know. We are more than happy to listen. And uh, like I said, we are just kind of looking for new creative ways to kind of get past the how do we pay for tutors um, and see how we can grow uh, our tutoring areas maybe without having to have that menu and creating those internship opportunities for students, creating those pathways for teaching um, and other opportunities so that we can expand our tutoring program. Thank you, Paul. And Chris, and the other thing, remember what I said earlier, we learn from students. So if students have good ideas about uh, gaps that they see into it. We'd love to hear from you. Do you have another question? Two more. It's in Dr. Ballas's area. I think she got it rolling, and uh, which we're grateful for. Uh, and uh, those uh, presentations will grow with time. So you start, and then you keep doing it, and, and you see the progression. Uh, I think that's the idea, and then it goes into your e-portfolio. Is that a fair summation of what you're trying to do? Her name is what? Jennifer San Miguel. Jennifer San Miguel. Right. And she's a peer staff for a tie Excellent. And we can't talk to you, but I'll come over to the So they can call you if uh, and you can get them in the right Dr. Glenn Glenda Ballas. Thank you. Chris. Sir. Um this is for Miss Monica Williams. Dr. Monica Williams, I'm sorry. Um for a university that's mission is to provide an upward social mobility for our students. For the students that are coming in in the fall semester of next year, will UNT Dallas be offering scholarships to existing students? Uh, currently, we offer scholarships for incoming freshmen, uh, incoming grad students, and transfer students, but unfortunately, it feels like for the existing students, uh, there's no other avenue outside of um, UNT Dallas, uh, I'm sorry, itself for external scholarships. Um, but as far as internal scholarships and grants for existing students, will that be offered for students coming in the fall semester of next year? Well, I can start with that because <clears throat> uh, I know that we're, uh, a lot of our scholarships are uh, offered at the beginning, that's true. And so it's important that we're in the field right now with this message, and I can show you our, our deck, our philanthropy deck, our, I call it investment deck. We're out there, in fact, I was speaking to a bunch of CEOs from the state, all around the state on Friday night. Uh, two of our students were there with me, and this organization called Y Texas, they want to raise money. They've chosen us as their first university, uh, and what they wanna do is raise money uh, 5,000 at a shot. So 5,000 will get you through, uh, for a transfer student, get you through a year if you have a Pell Grant, and 5,000 uh, gets you the rest of the way. And then uh, 10,000 gets you both years. So that's their idea. They're trying to get a number of CEOs to do that so they would be the Y Texas, and then you name the CEO or the company. And so we're out actively working on that. So that's one of the things uh, that we're working on right now. Monica, do you have anything else to add on that? Um, yes, thanks for your question, Chris. And um, I would just say that that's, at, that's top of mind. F fundraising for scholarships is, um, is paramount 
to us, one, one way in which we will do that is to host um, our first gala uh, where we'll honor someone from the community, a philanthropist who we hope will um, in, invest in the university and in scholarships. And um, I know it's on Stephanie Holly's mind. Um, uh, the, you know, I can just kind of give you the, the big idea which um, for the first Blazers and Bling Gala, uh, the goal was to honor um, Dak Prescott and to have him come and uh, receive an award. Um, that costs money, he costs money. Um, uh, so he said what he would do is he would donate a part of what we would have to pay him to come and help us raise money, he would donate that in honor of his mother, Peggy Prescott, for uh, a young woman who was pursuing a college education. So every donor that you encounter has their own motivation. Um, and so what we have to do uh, is keep beating the bushes, keep going to see donors and hope that they will invest in UNT Dallas. Once we get them on the campus, they're sold, but getting them here with just a few boots on the ground is um, our, our greatest challenge. So it's a good question, an important question. Uh, it's not unusual for a developing university. We're doing great on, uh, doing great on grants, foundation grants. Uh, uh, we're starting to do well with high net uh, donors. Uh, we need to do better, uh, but we'll we'll start to hit. But I'm I'm going out three five times a week meeting with people. All right, and also speaking on our strategic partnerships, uh, what are we doing to partner and be, uh, with schools in our local community in the Southern Dallas to have feeder programs for them, such as for Cedar Valley Early College, Mount View Early College. Uh, South Oak Cliff High School, Carter, Kimball, and Roosevelt, and especially Townview, my alma mater. Yeah, they're, uh, uh, we're all partner. We're partners with every one of them. And uh, is is Nokia still here? Uh, you want to talk a little bit about we're sure we have formal partnerships with Sunset and Lincoln, uh, uh, where we have early college high schools, and there will be a pipeline of that. Segoville and Carter are our partners. Uh, we're working with our police and fire academy uh, to create a pipeline uh, uh, program. Nakia is deeply invested in the schools you described and more. Okay, so can somebody? Here, I'll be, I'll be right. It's an it's an important question and. Good morning. Um, with our Upper Bound program, our grant aligns with six schools, uh, South Oak Cliff High School, uh, Lincoln, uh, Sunset, Seagoville, uh, Gilliam, and also uh, Lancaster uh, High School. Uh, we strategically go into those schools and support those students. Uh, going back to your question in regards to uh, tutorial support for students here on the campus, uh, we'll be traveling to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, next month, uh, we're also going to apply and add to our portfolio and trio of uh, the student support uh, services uh, program. Uh, we're being real intentional, not only what we're doing external with our community partners and those feeder schools, uh, but also what we plan to do and build out for our students here at the campus. Um, when we think about on the pre-collegiate side with that work that I do with not only DISD, but all the surrounding districts, uh, it's real intentional, those conversations we're having in regards to creating pipelines, creating opportunities to expose those students to our campus. And it's not just being limited to the high schools and the middle schools, it's actually drilling down into the elementary schools where they're interested in coming to visit and participate in our JAG uh, packs for the elementary students and also for the secondary students. Uh, so you're going to see a lot more uh, in regards to that. Uh, excited for your interest and know that we will call on you to get you active uh, to go out and be an ambassador for us. So, not, uh, not, not to get competitive, but there is no other four-year as involved with these schools as we are. It's not even close. And all we're going to do is build those relationships 
uh, not only is Nakia working with Lancaster High School, but we're working uh, with Lancaster High School for an urban garden. Uh, our students, uh, our, our new uh, uh, <clears throat> urban ag lecturer, uh, our, uh, we're working with St. Vincent de Paul, Lancaster High School, the neighborhood in Lancaster where the Jan Pruitt Center is. Uh, it's uh, going to just, uh, you know, double down on our relationship with, uh, with Lancaster. Uh, I'd also say that uh, we have built a strong relationship with Dr. Carol Wright, oh. Cheryl Wright, I'm sorry, with the Dallas Independent School District, who runs uh, a majority of the high poverty high schools in the DISD. And some of them we have not historically had close relationships with, like Madison. Uh, and Pinkston, but uh, we'll be developing those through the relationship with her. So thanks for the question. I see a question back here. Good morning. Thank you to, uh, to all the staff that are here supporting the students. And my question is a twofold question, and but it comes with a backstory. The backstory is it took everything I had to come to school. I literally had a friend walk me into school. And he walked me into the counselor's office and I said, hey, um, he advocated for me, not him, but he said, hey, this is my friend, John, you know. And then he said, she's really in a dark spot and she needs help. She needs somebody to speak to. And my response was, well, the response of the counselor was, fill this out and I'll get back to you whenever we have time. My friend was not content and he came back and he got the same response. Five minutes later, I get a call. Here's the time frame: four weeks. Come back in four weeks. Do you feel that that is an appropriate time frame for somebody who is in need? Obviously not. Um, you know, uh, I'd, you know, I think I'd like to know more about it. I'd like to talk to you about it. I'd like to, uh, uh, get the folks who are intimately involved with counseling, uh, on our, uh, staff because, you know, obviously we want a more, uh, immediate response, but I'd like to hear the whole story. And, uh, I want to make sure that you're getting what you need, uh, because, you know, let's face it, uh, when we deal with an urban population, uh, a lot of young people, a lot of, uh, a lot of students come to us, a lot of uh, non-traditional students come to us uh, with adverse childhood experiences. They face toxic stress situations in the community, uh, and uh, we're a university that uh, is, our aim is to be a welcoming place. And so uh, if you did not have a good experience, uh, we'll make sure you do have a good experience, okay? And I, I appreciate your the courage to, you know, speak up in a town hall meeting, but we will, uh, uh, we'll dig into this, okay? Did you have a second part or is that it? What will be done to ensure that doesn't happen to somebody who's in a darker place than I am? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to, our Dean of Students is a PhD clinical uh, clinician, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, Dr. Jamaica Chapel. So uh, yeah, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, and as President Mong said, I take that uh, very seriously. So if you had that experience, like I'd like to talk to you uh, today, if you have an opportunity so that we can remedy that as quickly as possible. What I can tell you is we have positions posted for two new counselors that come on board to UNT Dallas because students last year, last academic year, decided as part of their student service fees that they wanted to invest in mental health services. I am also a licensed professional counselor. So if something happens and you need to speak to somebody right away and you are in crisis right away, and you can't get in to see the counselor, the one that we have right now, 
versus the three that we'll have much sooner rather than later, then you can come and speak to me. It doesn't matter if I'm in a meeting, I will step out because I crisis is my area of expertise and I will deal with it and work with you in whatever way that you need right away. Thank you. So please follow up on that. Thank you again for your question. Uh, <clears throat> I also want to say that UNT Dallas has taken the lead in the city of convening uh, <clears throat> all hospital companies, all mental health and behavioral health providers in the city, the mayor, uh, the city council, uh, uh, and others to build a uh, integrated primary and behavioral health clinic just down the street from us. The city is donating four acres of land. We're 90% of the way there. We've got everybody who cares about behavioral health. Uh, they have recognized that this, that Southern Dallas uh, needs more high quality behavioral health uh, uh, clinicians. And though this clinic, when it's built, will be available uh, to our students, not only uh, to use, but also to, uh, if you're a, if you're a, a counselor, uh, you can get, you know, internships, practicum at this place. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. I think we'll know in the next few months uh, when it's going to be built. Uh, but I, again, I appreciate your question. I appreciate the courage it took to take the question. Um, uh, we can always do better. Uh, any other questions before we wrap up uh, Dr. Santos Hatchett? Thank you, Dr. Santos Hatchett, and thanks to all of you. Very good session. I appreciate it.